that's oh, brilliant. Okay, perfect. All right. That sounds good. So I had a million people that couldn't find it. You know, thank God you sent me the, the links because I didn't realize, you know. Yeah, no, I'm glad that we said that you we said have that. A lot of stuff going on. Oh, oh, we perfect. do. All right. Um, Tell on. me, um, how's, da how's Dahlia? She's doing really well. She's trying to juggle everything, but thank God doing really well. Let me open up now so that people can come on. Because right now nobody's allowed on. So I'm going to start it so people can actually come. Okay, start. And then we do. And we want to speak for how long? Um, we have an hour. So I thought you'd speak for about 40 minutes and then if there are questions, because we want to make right, sure. Great. Here we go. Okay, welcome everyone. Thank you for coming. We people are on time. I love that. So thank you for joining us. I am right now posting the YouTube link. Um, so give me one moment. You can see if you know people, Jeannie, in the meantime, say hi. Let me see who's here. I would love to see people that I know. Um, yeah, hi, Maria Jose, how are you? Um, it's great to see people that are here, Anabel. Um, it's really good. I'm so happy you made it because, hi, Gio, you're going to see stuff you've never seen before. And I'm, I'm not an influencer, so um, I, I don't get brownie points for showing you this stuff, but I really, really am excited about some of the stuff that I've uploaded. So, you know, let's save the questions for the end. I'm going to speak for 35, 40 minutes, and then let's save some of these questions for the end. And uh, we'll go from there. So it's great to see you all here. And um, Dora, the questions can be accessed. Um, you, you'll be able to ac access the questions. Yeah, if they put them into the q and I will definitely be monitoring it. Um, Hi, Jake. Great to see you here. Yeah. You know, I, I think I see you more online than in Miami. But um, it's great to see you here. And uh, Eileen also, so looking forward to showing you guys some pretty neat stuff. Okay, everyone, I'm just making sure everyone can also post in the chat. There we go. Oh, hi, Georgina. Well, we're, we're really just... excited to, to start here. When we start, I'm not gonna be able to, Take a look at the chat. Um, right, I will be monitoring it though. Hi, so. Georgina. Georgina is like one of the best assets we have. Um, Amazing. <laughs> at the Institute, we have a lot of uh, fun together. Um, so Georgina eh, Garza, and um, I'm hoping Georgina, because you, you have a lot of access to databases as well. So I'm really hoping that if I can even show you five new ones, it would be absolutely great. So looking forward. Oh, Annabelle said she finally made it and you have a shout out from Jake. Yes, yeah. I saw that. I saw that Jake is with the Sephardic Federation of Palm Beach and we do see each other from time to time, but not often enough. Annabelle, I'm glad you're here. And um, we have here Maria Jose Surribas that I said I gave a shout out before. She is an amazing genealogist from the uh, other area of Spain, uh, not the Western area that I'm, I know better. So she's uh, from the Barcelona kind of area. So shout out to uh, Maria Jose Surribas. Okay, so I want to be conscientious of people's time. So we'll give everybody another two minutes, I try not to start past five minutes past. Um, I was asked about closed captioning. I believe you can get it in the, in YouTube afterwards, not live as far as I know. If somebody knows how to do it, I'm happy to change that, but um, that's the way we've been doing it. And, and I see um, that Roxana's here from Belmonte. So that's pretty exciting too, Roxana, welcome. That's really nice. Uh, Gil Castillo, good to see you. Uh, well, I don't see you, but I guess you see me. So. Right. <laughs> okay, so good. So, and anybody we don't know, please put in where you're from and what you're hoping 
to hear today because we'd love to also see maybe if we don't get to everything today, we will have follow ups because Jeannie is here to help and she amazes me each time more and more. Um, and uh, now we have uh, Jordina joining as well. So it's uh, very exciting as well as the others behind the scenes. Um, oh, yes, hello, and I have you. a lot, a lot to cover. And yes. um, and it's overwhelming. I want you to know that you, later you can watch this again and again. And for sure, at no charge, you guys can um, look at all these uh, uploads. You can check, you can go in and out as many times as you want on the uh, Institute's website to all of these databases. And I, I made them. I, I meticulously uploaded every single piece of data on this by myself. So it's not something that, you know, came from anywhere else. So basically, um, you know, feel free to ask questions, but you can look at this uh, again and again on your own. And I'm um, excited. Don't feel overwhelmed. Uh, because it is overwhelming. So we'll start as soon as Draw Rock gives me the get-go. So again, thank you all for joining. Please, if there are actual questions, I think it's better if we keep them in the q and I will be monitoring the chat as well. Thank you for all those who are telling us that uh, you're sign where you're signing in from, because it's really nice to see that we actually have an international audience. Um, and people will be coming in and out as usual. Um, and... I don't want to take away from the time because this is really about the databases and I know everybody's here to hear about them. I hope that you've all been following also the Certificate of Sardic Ancestry that we've been working very hard on um, and we've had some wonderful um, responses and wonderful uh, applications as well. So we will talk about that at the end. Please do. I will say again, but I'll keep posting it as well, that there is a recording um, available on the YouTube. I've put it twice into the chat at this point. I'll put it again at the end. So please do follow along. And we will now understand how to, a little bit about the databases from genealogist Jeannie Milgram, who doesn't really need an introduction, but I just feel I have to share that she is an amazing genealogist and gives so much of herself to help others that are really searching for belonging and really searching for who they are and where they come from. And I don't think she needs more of an introduction to that. I just have to say how much I appreciate her for that. So besides the 24 grandmothers and everything else out there yeah. um, and the cookbooks and- Jora, that, that's very sweet. And, and I have to say that I, I started doing this work a long time ago, but working with Jora, the American Sephardic Federation and the Institute of Jewish Experience, working with Ashley Perry, who's not with us today, and uh, now recently Georgina, has enhanced uh, incredibly the visibility of who we are and how to get to who we were, because it's important, not just who we are today, because it's such a mishmash to try to, to you know, get back there. So, uh, Jora, I want to thank you for being a visionary as well and being able to push this uh, experience forward onto, you know, social media. So thank you. No, oh, thank you. Um, okay, so I will share now and it's over to you. I have a presentation, but we're gonna be uh, going through it. Uh, there's a tiny bit of a recap because I never know when you come on if you have been to my previous ones or not. So we're gonna move quickly through the recap. Uh, next. So wanna welcome you to Crypto Jewish Genealogy. We're not calling it Sephardic Genealogy. This is my personal collection of resources. I've been doing and um, compiling for over 10 years. And while it may look similar to other genealogical searches, the actual way to trace back to a family that was Jewish before the Inquisition means putting together many small clues to be able to reach a final conclusion, which is why I took on the task to compile these resources. So let's continue next. So crypto-Jewish genealogy, what it is and what it isn't. Um, it is never straightforward. I mean, I met one person who was able to fly through this uh, one time on the internet, but 
for everyone else, including myself, it's going through a myriad. I mean, people die. You, you need to find, usually we do a maternal lineage and you need to find these grandmothers in a row and face it, people die. So we, we have to search via a sister. We have to search via a twin and all of our secrets are underneath the documents and not within the documents. One could find a whole lineage and not know that it was crypto Jewish. As a matter of fact, I met a cousin in Brussels from the 15th century and his family has been doing genealogy on the village of my ancestors for, I don't know how long. And they were shocked when uh, they saw me online. They knew that we, you know, we matched up our, our grandmothers. We matched up everything. We matched up on DNA. I mean, we're like second cousins. And the whole family, the, the parents, the grandparents, everybody was shocked that it was a crypto Jewish family and they are master genealogists. So we assemble all of this information and it's not about names. I wish everyone would get away from the Sephardic quote unquote list that, that exists on the internet. I mean, they're fine and dandy, but it can be about names if you're still carrying the name, usually if you're a male and you're carrying the name, but um, it all depends if you're going to rely on a name where your family name, which is might be Sephardic, where and what period of history it appeared, which is why it's important to know the, the history. So traditionally, if you want to find, we can go mother after mother after mother. And I will now be covering the collections that I have compiled. So giving these clues uh, to you. Um, Dora, next. Okay, so even for season genealogies, okay, the search, I think, yeah, I think the next one is all of the, in the next one. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so this is really completely different and it is a turnaround of any ah. mindset. Okay, no problem. We can go in any order. So it's a total, we, we can do this one. So it's a total different mindset. Um, meaning, again, we have to look under the documents and you have to forget pretty much all the family stories, the lores, the information that was passed down from all the abuelas and make believe that you know nothing. If you clear your brain and you, you think you know nothing, then you will be able to go back in a, this will really help you. You know, even though I talk about recording family history and that's important, but I have so much stuff. I have, I have notebooks filled with family lore that I'm, I'm still hunting for. So it's better if you don't get stuck and say, okay, so my last name is Plasencia. So therefore my family must have been from Plasencia in Spain. No, not necessarily. It could have been my family name. My dad's name is Medina. There's about four different Medinas in Spain, Medina del Rio Seco, Medina this, Medina that. And to date, I have not been able to match, even though I've done all my dad's genealogy, I have not been able to match the actual Medina name to one of those Medina locations. So let's not get stuck in a particular region or town. Remember, you're attempting to go back down 500 years of history and look at the underside of what everyone else is seeing. The crypto Jews, that's what they were doing. They were living in the shadows. They were not living. They were living in the light, but their who they were is living in the shadows. So what we're doing now is we're searching in the shadows and not the light. Um, the collection is mostly about the Jews that converted and became Catholics. Um, many are still Catholics today and many want to remain Catholic and that's perfectly fine. Uh, you know, they just are proud of this Jewish ancestry. So we can help anybody to, to trace their migration and to find their Jewish ancestry. Next. Okay, so these are some of the questions that we will usually ask were there a lot of cousin intermarriages in the family? That always helps. Crypto-Jewish families who are intermarrying with each other. 
I mean, my grandparents, maternal, were first cousins. Their parents were first cousins, so on and so forth. First and second cousins. I don't, you know, sometimes third, but usually first and second, where there are a lot of nuns and priests in the family. This is just a tiny recap to what I've spoken about before. There usually would have been a lot of nuns and priests because they help people to marry Jewishly and to keep the Jewish rituals while pretending to be Catholic. And it helped a lot if the village priest was uh, a Jew under underground. Uh, did the family have unusual rituals or customs? Were some babies not baptized? It was rare to find a baby baptized in my family. Um, so what the, that's the clues that are under, underneath. So it would say, bautizado bajo necesidad. And that means that the baby was too ill to go to the church and the family baptized him at home. So guess what? They didn't get baptized. So I have many, many of these so-called super ill children and they all lived and nobody died. So they just were not baptizing the kids. Were there special cooking or, or kitchen customs? Uh, do you know what type of work the family was in? And this is crucial, super important because normally businesses back then and today, they're passed on to the kids. So if your father or your grandfather is a goldsmith, chances are that you're not gonna be a map drawer uh, a map or cartographer as a grandchild, chances are that you're going to learn and as an apprentice, the goldsmithing, silversmithing, butchering, shoemakers, et cetera, et cetera. So trying to find out, and many times it's in the documents, what they did, that is all crucial. Um, was the family religious? Did they always go to church on Sunday? This I've spoken about. Even in earlier times, I was in Catholic school and my sister and I were dropped off at the church in Miami every Sunday at noon and the grandparents wouldn't go, the, my parents wouldn't go, nobody would go. My sister and I were these two little kids in the middle of the church, all of these families hugging and kissing. And we were just standing there by ourselves and kind of looking at each other like, all righty then. And they never went to church. Um, so really there's clues that are there that you may not see. I didn't understand this about my family until I started delving into this. And I'm like, wait a minute, my grandparents, maternal and my parents, they never stepped foot in a church. So they made me do it, but they didn't do it. So uh, again, do they light candles on a Friday night? So that's uh, also important. Uh, so these are family customs. Next. Okay, I can't stress enough. And on uh, practically every single time I give a talk, Every time I will tell you that you need to know your history. You need to know, you can't just say, oh, I'm going to search on family search and I'm going to go on, on, you know, I'm going to go on all of these ancestry and everything. No, you need to understand the history because if you don't understand the history, you're just going to be looking at documents that you're not going to own. They're not going to become you. They're not going to become part of you. So you have to understand everything like this. Where were the tribunals? The tribunals, there were offices of the Inquisition everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. However, tribunals was a location where people would be literally judged and all the documentation would be there. And then later on, there would be the auto da fe, where you would either be burned alive or you would be further judged. So and I'm going to use this term loosely, but if you are lucky enough where your family back in these dates or in any of these locations, it's going to be just a tad easier. And I say a tad than if you were just in some random village like my family. So know your history, become part of the history, even before you find out that this is where you're going with this know your history because you know what my experience in all of these years that I have been doing this and I did my own genealogy I started over 30 years ago and I have been doing it since I never stop however anybody that is sitting in this webinar or is going to hear this webinar or is is partially interested in this if you're here and you're sitting here listening to me 
something is telling you inside that this is who you are and it's just a matter of piecing it together therefore i'm telling you you do not need to find out that you are or your family was crypto jewish back in the day before you start owning this uh this background so i'm telling you go learn it go own it and then continue uh with the information okay next okay so this is the page and a cover of a proceso of the spanish inquisition from 1596 cuenca spain elaborate detailed the idea is that you should be able to follow a lineage all the way back to the Inquisition, because it will probably be the first document that will show you the Jewish lineage. Our synagogues and our cemeteries were destroyed. Some last will and testaments will allude to a Jewishness, but normally we are trying to head straight back into an Inquisition document. Next. Rule of thumb. This is my rule of thumb. I don't, I've never seen this anywhere. I have never read it anywhere. I have just listened and heard thousands of people. And I've been doing this for a very long, long time. So I'm going to give you my rule of thumb, not set in stone. Keep going West. When you find your sources with your family names, go West. This means that the migrations went mostly from east to west, Spain, Portugal, Holland, Netherlands, Antilles, some other islands, and Mexico. You're going west. Therefore, if you find many results for your name, start at the furthest east, such as Mallorca, in Mallorca, then Spain, then Portugal. And obviously, you would be following a diaspora. An interesting note is that typical Sephardic lineages versus crypto Jewish will have their diasporas going east to west. They left Spain, they went to the Ottoman Empire and to other places, and they went to Italy. And of course, people went west. And people went to the Pyrenees, they went to France. I'm not saying I also have family that went west. However, the plethora of information of this wave going east, I'm sorry, west, it is meaningful enough for me to mention it here today. Next. So I want to show you some of the resources that we consulted, that I consulted in making some of these lists. Taxes paid by Jews. I'm going to talk about this uh, at length because I searched for my own lineage for a very long time, and it wasn't until I got to the taxes paid by Jews that I actually found my lineage. I was able to, to say, okay, this is it. Family trees that are found in museums that have been verified. This picture I show you here, this one was found in Curaçao. Family scribes. Normally, a family used just one scribe for generations. Nobody wrote their own documents. People did not really read and write. A family had a scribe. And a scribe has a very unique signature. So sometimes when I was, and this is so important, you're ready to give up. And all of a sudden, you're just following this little doohickey that's down here. This was the signature of the scribe of my family. So, and at some point, you may just have to follow the scribe books to be able to find your lineage. These are the little clues. Books in museum. I went to the Canary Islands. I mean, I, I was only there for two or three days in the museum trying to digitize their files. So far, no luck. Uh, it's for another webinar to talk about my difficulty in, in having their files done for free, but we're not going to talk about that today. So they have this book of the Inquisition. It would make any of us who know, like I'm from Cuba originally, who know that our families came from the Canary Islands into Cuba, and then we sit in the Canary Islands uh, Museum in Palma, and you're looking at this book that's about this thick, and you know that your family's name is in there, and you can't spend who knows how long in the Canary Islands. I'm still trying to get it digitized. Next. 
Okay, so I'm gonna go quickly. And again, I told you later on, you can you know play around with this all you want. In the collection of the resources available are the list of every archive in Spain from city A through Z with the address, with the email address, with the phone number and the hours. Of course, things change at time to time, but you have the general idea. You can go and you can contact any archive in Spain when you click on my link. These are all the links in this website of all the archives, the web links and addresses for all the archives in Spain. Inquisition judgments from the Covija region of Portugal by number. You can go back, you can see the name of the people, then you can go back to the, the archive in Lisbon and you can pull up lickety split, you can pull up the Inquisition judgment of your family. And the Covija region was very important, had a lot of people in there. So uh, I have a list of every repository around the world that contains Inquisition documents. I have a list of the crimes during the Inquisition. Funny enough, when you were in Spain and Portugal and you were in a crime, it was generally for practicing Judaism. It was generally um, because you were following the law of Moses. It didn't say Judaism specifically. It, was it would say, siguiendo la ley de Moisés, or following the law of Moses. So that indicated that you were a a Jewish sympathizer. And, and then they didn't call you a Jew because as far as Spain is concerned, and I have had historian that, that are the archive uh, directors in Spain tell me to my face this far away that there were no Jews in Spain after 1492. Well, definition of Jewish, we're not gonna get into. Of course, there were Jews in Spain, but they called them Judaizers, because you were no longer officially Jewish, because you should have left and you were practicing underground. They did not call you a Jew, a crypto Jew, a Murano, a Nusim, any of the converso. They called you Judaizante, which means that you were practicing, the, in other words, preaching Judaism. So you will see that word Judaizer. So there's, uh, I put the list of, uh, oh, so in South America, Mexico, they had different crimes that proved that you were a Jew. And it was kind of like, for example, they would take a little, um, a little uh, piece of paper, like a little stamp with a, with a picture of Jesus or the Virgin, and they'd tape it to the bottom of their shoe and they would walk on it. And uh, that was a crime proving that you were a Judaizer. So, you know, it, depending in, in Peru and in Colombia, but Peru is specifically, specifically, they would say a lot that you were a, a witch and, uh, or a warlock. And so depending on the culture, they would, you know, use different terminology. So these are all the crimes. So I have a whole writing on exactly what are the Inquisition transcripts. I showed you one before. Um, so I gave a whole primer. You can see it online. It's a huge primer on uh, what, you know, crypto Jewish genealogy and how to follow it. Normally, these are handouts that I give when I give a, a live conference. Um, a list of all the university archives in Spain and what they contain. Jewish occupations that are in the Inquisition records, um, Spain, Jewish occupations in the Portuguese records. Uh, let's see, web links to every Inquisition archive. I mean, come on, this is really like chewed down, you know, ready for you guys to dive in and spend like, you know, six years in front of your computer. Uh, the taxes paid on Jewish heads. We're going to get back to that. Uh, Drora, next. Okay, archives around the world that contain Inquisition documents. Abbreviation used in the Curacao records and graves. Amazing collection of graves from Curacao. Archives and parishes in Puerto Rico, Catholic parishes, parishes in Cuba, uh, the names of everyone that was in the Roshpina Seminary in Porto during the era of Captain Barrovato, the English uh, occupations in the Zamora region, 
The I'm going to interrupt you, sorry, one moment, because we have a question if we could put in the chat the exact website. Okay, are you putting that in? I am, tell me. What it's is, on, what it's is on that this. website? This is on your website. This is on our website. I'm putting it in right now. Just wanted to tell everyone. Thank you. Let me know when I can continue. You can continue. I'm putting okay. it in. Viaje a Indias is probably the number one most exciting thing on this resources. I'll explain that later. Viaje a Indias laws enacted and sources cited. So uh, we're going to start taking a look at some of them. Um, next. Okay. So when I said we have all the archives in Spain, A to Z, you can see the information that I have put on, for example, El Archivo Diocesano de Alcalá de Henares, I start with A, and it says this archive contains documentation that is normally found in the diocese, marriage records, adoption records. So when you go into this particular collection, you will see exactly uh, this for every single archive. It's literally, uh, there's thousands of bits of information in there. Next. Okay, so here is what I had said, list of those sentenced in Covija, Portugal. And you will see like the first one is a woman named Jomar Fernandez. She was 80 going on to 90. So she was, um, and uh, she lived in Coimbra. Look, you gotta get creative. Some of this stuff is in Spanish. Some of this stuff is in Portuguese. And basically back in the day, they pretty much sounded the same. And this number, whenever you see this number, looking like this, PT-GT-TSO, et cetera. These are the number of the Inquisition document. So you can go in Spain or in Portugal, these happen to be from Portugal, and you go in with these numbers into the websites, into the different archives in Spain or Portugal. And if somebody has already digitized it, um, some of them are digitized, some are not. So you can go in and look at these yourself specifically. Next. Okay, taxes paid on Jewish heads per city. So when I was doing and trying to go to the rabbis in Israel, the first time I went with all of my documentation, I couldn't really prove that there was a Jewish population in the village of my ancestors. And the rabbis, I had all the documents. I did this with original documents. My work was never, let me look in a book, let me match up the books, let me look in a, in a name on the internet. No, 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 no. I presented every birth certificate, marriage certificate, death certificate, linking every grandmother. So when I got to the 15th grandmother, I sat before the rabbis in Israel with all of my documents and they said, we can't find anything on the internet anywhere in any book that there were Jews in the village of your family in Fermoseya in Spain. And I was like, I, you know, because how do I prove that? I mean, I had every document, but how was I going to be able to prove? So I found an obscure book in a library in the Zamora region where my family was from, where the village is from. I found an obscure book that had from Fermoseya, Spain, the taxes paid for Jewish heads from 1484, 1486, all the way to 1490. And it says it like this, the, the, the coin at the time was called Maravedi. You know, like you would say peso, you would say dollar, you would say euro. The coin of the time was Maravedi. So if you look here in all these different little towns, um, Agreda, and you see 1474, 1800 Maravedis were paid for Jewish heads. So what do we know now? We know that there were Jews in Agreda because if there weren't Jews in Agreda, and these are from civil records, right? When people come to me and tell me everything burned, I really struggle with that because yes, things burn, but there's always a record. There's like, there is in the United States, there's state, there's federal, there's civil. So this is an enormous, enormous uh, help to people looking. And you can see how much they paid. You can see, for example, in this Aguilar de Campos, 
that they, in 1490, they paid 2000. They stopped paying before 1492. So people ask me, so how many Jews were there? So that's an excellent question. And the reality is that nobody knows, but I will give you more or less what we do know. We do know that a, a man over 21 normally, and I don't know per city of a change, but at least the village that my family's from, normally would start with paying about 21 maravedis. If he had a goat, they would add. If he owned a, a vineyard, they would add more. If he owned a, a fruit tree or, or, or a winery, or in other words, every single little thing that that person owns. So it's very difficult to take a thousand maravedis, divide it by 20 and say, boom, that's how many Jews there were. No. Um, again, it had to be males over 21 and then depends what he owned. So, you know, somebody could have been paying 50 maravedis and somebody could have been paying 20 and it's also loosey goosey. But the most important thing here is that there were taxes on Jewish heads in your village and you didn't, haven't been able to find a Jewish presence you are in. So I hope you find it. Uh, this is a very valuable resource. Okay, next. I have compiled all of the archives in Puerto Rico. A lot of people from Puerto Rico are recently in the last couple of months, I'm sorry, last couple of years have been coming out of the woodwork. Every second email that comes to me these days is from Puerto Rico. So I took the time to put in, like I did for Spain, every archive in Puerto Rico, and uh, you can search there. Um, and, you know, I don't have exactly what they have, but these are the archives. Next. All right, the additional resources um, were found in census records, recent resources, phone book, and while limited in Betafutsot, the Museum of the Jewish People in Israel, on a general basis, you will find things uh, in there for the bigger cities. And you will find it for, let's say for Toledo, you'll find it for Madrid, Salamanca. You're not gonna find it for these tiny little villages, but there is information. You can go online to Betafutsot and you can request this information. When I did it, it didn't have a cost. I don't know if it has a cost now, but you can certainly go into Beta Futsot. And even though they are more, uh, let's say, Holocaust driven, they are also history driven. So you can go in there and try to see how much they have on um, the Spanish people. Next. Okay. So other sources located overseas. And yes, sometimes you do have to travel overseas because if I had not been standing in a library in Salamanca or in Zamora, I wouldn't have gotten this, but um, I found these books. Where else do you find a book on the Jews of the province of Zamora? The Jews and conversos from the reign of Castile and dissertations, academia.edu or even searches will take you to dissertations that are done specifically on what you are looking for. There's a good and a bad to dissertations. The good is that the information is there. The bad is that as a dissertation is done, it's made on something very small, very unique. Uh, let's say we're going to study the family of Gonzalo Santos de Paz from Covija. So, wow, if you're not looking for him or his family, then it's more difficulty. And last, heraldries. The coats of arms. This is a very Jewish coat of arms. Um, I've seen many coat of arms that are, you know, have equal hidden things. And, uh, but this is, is one of them. Next. So there's a lot more to cover. So I'm gonna go really quick. So. Excel data sheets that are, are, when you look for a name on, and we'll go and, and drawer is gonna go over it in a minute. When you look for a name, you're gonna come up with where the name was found in a bibliography as a crypto Jewish name, Sephardic name. And you would have to go to that bibliography 
and you would have to search specifically. But I want you to see, because if you're looking for, let's say, Medina, you're going to see that it was found in, in this location or that location. And you want to be sure. And again, you will be going east to west. So you want to be sure that you can access. But I want you to see what is the data that I have uploaded, 80,000 bits of data that back up these searches. Okay, so Canary Islands Inquisition from many sources, the Luis de Carvajal tree from many sources, Luis de Carvajal, who was um, from Mexico, whose family, PS, came from the area of my family, and I am an ascendant, not a descendant of Luis de Carvajal. Um, my uh, family married his great, great aunt, Beatriz de Carvajal. So um, all of the information from the tree, the conversos from Burgos at the end of the Middle Ages, Sevilla and other Spain, Auto da Fe Inquisition victims, Curacao, Bethheim Cemetery, every single grave I uploaded, all the Inquisition victims of Cartagena, Colombia, of Covija, Portugal, all of the information from my personal research, all the colonizers of El Nuevo Reino de Leon, the community of Curacao, the data, the Inquisition cases from Zamora, region of Spain, crypto-Jewish and Jewish data from many sources, the students of the Roche Pina Seminary in Porto, the Mexican victims, Inquisition data, all of them, every single one of them and their genealogies are in this, in this uh, source. The names and genealogies from the Libro Verde de Aragón, the Netherlands Sephardic Marriage Registries, Netherlands Spanish Portuguese Cemetery, Jamaica, next, Jamaica Jewish names on the gravestones. You know, there was a huge influx from Portugal to the Netherlands, to London, to Jamaica. Uh, Cuban Jews and crypto Jews of the Caribbean, Jewish names from Leon 10 to the 15th century, the victims of the Inquisition of Chile, the another uh, from Cartagena, Colombia, Beira Interior, Miranda, and Belmonte, Portugal victims. Belmonte has a museum with the name of all their Inquisition victims from Belmonte on their walls, quite extensive. I took pictures of their walls and I came home and I uploaded it. Um, Netherlands genealogy and aliases from notarial deeds. I was in the general archives in the Netherlands and they had and had and had, and all of a sudden they pull out of the back for me a small back in the day kind of index card box with over 1500 notarial cards. And of course, my husband, Michael, and I took pictures of all of this mm -hmm. and, um, and then... I uploaded it into Excel sheets. Um, the victims of the Inquisition of Lima, Peru, the Inquisition victims from Mallorca, the Jews of Galicia, Deira, the Jewish community of Coro, Venezuela, of Barcelona, Venezuela, the Braganza community of Portugal, Cuba, crypto Jews and conversos. And then my husband and I went to Passover last year in Morocco and of course, I took all the names from the 1492 synagogue, uh, the synagogue La Zama, Marrakesh names, and the names of the Beth El Memorial in the, in the synagogue in Casablanca. So I've tried to be as comprehensive as possible. This lists are what's backing up the data when you search for your name. Next. I wanna show you an excerpt from the Mexico Inquisition data. Um, I believe it's several thousand. So you can see it's uh, uploaded. This is based on the work of Alicia Goshman de Bacal from Mexico, who has been studying this. Alicia um, is just an incredible friend of mine and uh, like the most important, I think, uh, Jewish historian and Inquisition historian from Mexico. So I'm really proud to have a lot of her collection. Um, I also want to mention that uh, a lot of historians have given me their collections to upload 
One is Jesus Zambrina, Dr. Jesus Zambrina from the Zamora uh, region, who has really been amazing, has given me a lot of the information. Maria Jose Surribas has also given me a lot of the information from her region. And in Miami, uh, a colleague, Eugenio Alonso, has given me information to upload, and he has only studied Cuba. So I want to just shout out to them and thank you. Uh, next. Okay, this comes from the Sephardic Marriage Registers, and uh, you will see all of the credits on the, when you go in here. So you can see the names of the people. What happened is that let's say in, uh, before the inquisition, the family name was Santos. Then they would make uh, a, a name that was Christian. And then they would maybe call themselves Alvarez. And then when they went on to the Netherlands, they would call themselves for business. They would continue to call themselves Santos because they were still conducting business, but then they continued. And sometimes they took new names like, or they went back to Santos or Alvarez. And sometimes they took on a totally new name as aliases. So you will find that a lot of the information from the Netherlands is talking about the aliases. Many families had three or four. A lot of them said, you know, basta, I'm done with this. And then they went and got new names like Israel. Uh, the name Israel is was a very popular name that was taken on. So next. Okay, here's a list just for you to see what's available. The name of the Inquisition victims from Mallorca, the year 1521, um, and they were burned in effigy, for example, or they were burned at the stake. They were burned in effigy. Look, none of this is fun. None of this is pleasant. Um, but that doesn't mean that it's who we, it affects us who we are today. If there's really, you know, epigenetic DNA and I'm working on a study for this and it affects our DNA that our ancestors were burned alive. And to read this, it took me a long time to be able to swallow this stuff. And is it pretty? It's not pretty, but it makes us who we are today. And I am convinced that it makes us much stronger individuals. Next. Okay, this is my favorite one, and I left it for last. So there is a catalog, and it's called Pasajeros a Indias. And you cannot really search it, but starting in the early 1500s, it lists every single person that came to uh, the New World. So, and every single person that went from one Spanish territory to another Spanish territory. So this is amazing. Let's take the first fellow here or the second one, Gaspar Suarez. Notice Suarez, usually with an S as in Sam, is with an X because it was spelled that way. So just keep this in mind as you spell things that, you know, everything is not what it seems. And people say, no, I know the name was Suarez with an S. No, at one point, it was registered Suarez with an X. Don't get upset about it. A lot of people are, you know, fight with me like, no, no, no. I know it had an S. All right. You know, okay. But really, so he came from Sevilla and he was going to Peru. So if your family name is Suarez and you are searching and you live in Lima, Peru, and you can actually find your first relative that arrived in Peru. And this is like so exciting because you know what? This viaje a Indias, pasajero a India, this is the missing link. This is the missing link. Normally people tell me, I've gone as far back as I can go. I'm in Colombia or I'm in Uruguay. Or... And you know what? My gosh, if you can find your relative in here, you are good to go. It'll tell you that he was single and he was with his brother, Luis. The next guy with his brother Gonzalo, you know, so you may find it. He was the son of Juan Gonzalez. So this is really the, the treasure trove. There's thousands and thousands of names. Honestly, I have only been able to upload, I think maybe 2,500, 3,000. 
Um, so it, it hasn't been so simple, but I'm still uploading every day. Next. Okay, list of the names and bibliographies. So when you go into this list, and I brought up the Peralta, you always have to remember that maybe your last name is Peralta. I would take, if your last name is Peralta, I would look up in, in Viaje a Indias, and then I would remember that it could have been De Peralta. And in a alphabetical listing, you would see it as De Peralta. The more bibliographies that you see attached to your name, the stronger a case you have on this. So it's really important to see how many are named are there. Next. So this is my family tree. And at the bottom where the little circle is, that's um, 16, I think 1620. And everything that's up in olive green are full families that were judged or burnt at the stake directly on my maternal lineage. Next. These are the books that I have written, most of them recording my own family history. I cannot impress upon you enough that you need to record your family history. Um, it would be great, you know, if you can pick up, let's say, one of these books on Kindle or whatever it is. Um, but most importantly, and the reason for this is that you record your own family history. Next. And I'm done. I'm ready for questions. Wonderful. So thank you. Um, I would like to invite Georgina to join us as well, if that's okay. Sure. I think that would be important. But in the meantime, I'm going to ask you a question. And Georgina, you can decide whether you want to open or not. Um, but the first question is, are there any archives of Jews in Southwest USA? I'm not sure exactly the, all the questions, but... Uh, Okay, so um, I'm sure that there are names. I don't know if that would be Georgina can answer that better. I'm not sure if they're coming because all of these are primary sources. I'm not sure. And she can answer that if they are available and primary source because my collection is focused on primary sourcing. Um, now, there yes. are a few questions. Oh. Hi, Georgina. You can Hello, there's uh, records of the Mayflower and I do have books that I can share in to Jenny so she can upload those books. Oh, no, 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 that's okay, Georgina. <laughs> okay. <I'm> gonna... <laughs> I but just you... finished the 7,000 names I have left for Viaje de India. So, you know, let, let's hold off on that. Okay, sounds good. But if you have some of the names of the books, I can share it with people. That would be great. Um, so that would be great. Um, and then the question regarding Louis Carvajal, Louis Carvajal, um, where can we find the tree? I thought you had said it, but I'm gonna. He's asking. They're asking what where. I from, what I have from Louis de Carvajal is the Excel spreadsheet that is showing all of the information on his lineage. So, um, you know, maybe you want to show later where these are on the website. Okay, I'm going in in a minute. And if you don't find it for whatever reason on the website, you can contact me uh, through geniemilgram.com and I can send you that spreadsheet, no problem. Okay, and if you're asking about either Turkish or Iranian, that's a little beyond the purview of this session. I would love to speak to you separately. Send me an email. We hopefully can set you up with somebody there. But uh, um, beyond, I'm just letting everybody know it's beyond the purview of what we're doing here because we're really talking about those, like Jeannie said, who went west. Um, and then are there any resources for Spartac Jews that went to England, particularly before the 18th century? I have to tell you that I find that one of the best uh, places now it, it's going to be I'm, I'm entering your question from the back um there's a website called synagogue scribes that has and it's from england and it has an incredible amount of last wills and testaments from a lot of the uh, english jews 
So I suggest, and, and that's the only one that I'm really familiar with, because I also found one of my Portuguese relatives that had moved to uh, Spain, I'm sorry, England, and I was able to follow his last will and testament that was listed on that site, which was about 30 pages. So I suggest you contact synagoguescribes.org or .com. And, and Georgina, I'm just reminding you, if you send me the names of the books, because Arlene here is asking for them as well. Um, so just reminding, and I wanted to share at... Uh, here we go. I do, but um, my internet is not working that properly on my phone. But once I get it, I can I'll send it in the follow up email. If you send okay. it to me, I'll send it in the follow up email. No worries. Um, and um, Joseph, Yosef, Dr. Yosef Matalon, not Matalon. Sorry, I know I'm saying your name wrong. Um, but he also had some uh, resources that he said he would share from Puerto Rico. So that would be wonderful as well. So what I'm sharing, so thank you. I mean, this is a group effort. That's how we do it, right? We resource, we network, we, Jeannie does the brunt of the work and then we all kind of share together and <laughs> resource. Um, so I wanted to show you how you get to these resources first. So this is the main page of the Institute of Jewish Experience, um, which talks about Judaism in general. We do history, we do culture, we do courses, we do online to so the person who asked about their Turkish roots. Um, there are definitely um, online classes that we did, there are educational clips. And one of the things now that we are proud to host is the Certificate of Ancestry. And if you click on there, you'll see that's where you get to the page to apply for it, a basic overview of what it is. And then within the certificate, you also have Jeannie Milgram's ancestral databases. And that's what she was referring to today. And that's what I want to make sure that you all see is here. I know somebody already tried it while we were online. Um, and you can see that all of them are here. Do you want me to click through to something, Jeannie? Or? No, I mean, any, any one of them, just irrelevant, just any one of them. So they can see, you know, what comes up. And I told you, you can play with this all you want. Right. And the idea is really to just keep clicking through. <laughs> right. You just keep click, 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 click. These particular ones, I believe these are the victims of the Cartagena, Colombia Inquisition. And it's coming from many sources. So um, all of them will have the document number so that you can look it up. This is uh, the, the reason for being done this way is that I wanted that your resources would be self-contained, which is why I kind of said before in a book, um, if the book, a book, any book mentions where you can go back to see the original document, then this is what is valuable to you. Um, for whatever need you want to use it to, you want to know that your document, that your family was on document number, you know, XPQ 73H, in the Cartagena Colombia archives, this is what is offered in this, um, in this, that you can go back to the original primary source. So you can see that there's, you could spend, like you said, what, six years? Is that what you said? Yeah, it's been a years. long time going through these. <laughs> um, the other thing I wanted to point out that Jeannie had mentioned, besides our website and all of this, is also uh, the, the Diaspora Museum is now called ANU. And so this is their database and you can type in the name of a person, place or term. And like Jeannie said, it's fairly Eastern European, but there are names of places um, that are here as well. And so at least you can get a basic overview. So that's an important thing as well. Um, I do wanna, I'm not sure which of you wanna answer this. There was a question about, are there any resources on Sephardic Jews traveling to Mexico, particularly those who married indig indigenous people? Okay, so um, I'll answer first and then Georgina can um, answer. What I have been able to, so as I was uploading Pasajero a Indias, it was an instruction in history for me and I found an amazing, I learned so much. I'm so grateful to have been able to upload and continue to upload. Why? Because and I made notes along the way, and I will publish some of this at some point. So 
I've been able to perceive that about 80% of the men were men traveling, women or, or even higher, women only traveled with the men when they were married and had a couple of kids. Those men were going to, let's say, Mexico, and they were going there single. A couple of years later, you find, again, I said, this list goes from Spanish territory to Spanish territory. Those men were picking up indigenous women. And those women, and then a couple of years later, you find the same guy, let's say Juan Vélez, you know, Juan González, whatever it is, you find the same fellow leaving Mexico, now with his wife, which you know was indigenous because, you know, first of all, it says she was indigenous. And number two, if his real wife from Spain, if he had had a real wife, she would have come. And then you see him going with this indigenous wife to Peru. So I think that unless Georgina has another, um, you know, specifically about the indigenous women that were picked up, I would say that only what I have is in this Viaje a Indias, where you can physically see them marrying indigenous women. Yes, uh, they did come to Mexico. And like you said, they were single men. And um, I know the history of Moctezuma, which uh, Hernan Cortez married uh, the daughter of Moctezuma. And like you said, yes. So they, they had kids and their future generations, they, they went to other countries. Uh, either South America or actually they went up north trying to fly the, the Inquisition. So yes, there is history of women that married um, Sephardics or crypto Jewish and that they travel around Latin America. I, I yes. do want to point out that the Viaje a Indias is every single person that got on a ship. It does not say if you were Jewish or not unless they had to prove your genealogy that you were not. So my experience is, as I said, we, we, we were in the shadows. If somebody was requesting that you prove that you weren't a Jew, normally you were. And Dr. Maldonado, sorry, I pronounced your name incorrectly before. Uh, I hope that's correct. Um, he has been answering questions and there's been a lot of um, activity in the chat, which is really wonderful. This person knows this and this person knows that. And I just think that um, in addition to everything else out there, it's really wonderful to see people helping each other. Um, and he asked the question, he said, I have names on the lists. However, how does finding the name on the list of passengers connect you to being Jewish? Um, it, hi, Joe. Um, I know Joe very well. Uh, I helped Joe early on in his mission to return to the Jewish people. So I'm proud of who he is today, even if I just helped in a tiny, tiny way. But Joe is actually my go-to Puerto Rico person, and he is very well versed. Joe, again, it does not say that they were Jews, but it is the missing link to a town in Spain or a region in Spain. So your people are gonna have to dig further into inquisition documents and stuff, but there are so, so many that come to me that have reached the end of the line in Venezuela or in any of these countries that if they find that passenger, they at least have a way to search in Sevilla or wherever it is, and they can continue going back from there. It is a way to open that missing link for people. And of course, it does not say that they were Jews or not Jews. It is just a missing link, especially when you are living in a Latin American country. And uh, there's an interesting question here. How do you differentiate that the the taxes for heads of Jewish households different for, as opposed to Spanish residents during the medieval and modern Spain. It says the, the list say, it, you know, when you, when you look this up, the original documents literally say impuestos en cabeza judías. 
taxes on Jewish hands. <laughs> so I don't know how much Spaniards were being charged, but these literally say impuestos en cabeza judía. And there are a few questions about DNA. I just feel a need to say we're stay, we're not relating to that in this. Um, we're relating really to the databases and the um, family history. So I want to make sure that we have that. Um, if you have um, if you have any other questions, please do reach out. I will send a follow up email. Uh, we will look forward to continuing the conversation because this is just really an important and you should know that uh joe i guess as you called him said genie is the person who helped me in israel when i decided to make a halachic return forever grateful now you're eight so i had to at least put that out even though you've had lots of shout outs all over the place and um so thank you all and thank you georgina and genie for everything you've been doing it's, in a uh, couple hours we're doing this again in spanish folks yeah, we do apologize that we didn't do closed captioning here. We will have to work on that. You are 100% correct. So, okay. Thank you. Two hours come back in Espanol, and we will do this again in Espanol. I'm excited to do that. One hour. Well. One hour. <laughs> have a great day. Bye. Bye. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you.